charge easily your users based on usage. Let's discover LAGO, a scalable and modular open source platform for metering and usage-based billing. When selling online, you have generally three options. A fixed one-time price, for example when you sell a product or a service. A recurring subscription paid monthly or yearly. And usage-based pricing. For example, you have an AI platform allowing you to generate audio from text. Your first 30 minutes of audio will be free then it will be $10 per 30 minutes. With traditional payment providers, you have to set up yourself those calculations and bill accordingly. With LAGO, it's been designed to make it simple and seamless. That's what we will discover in this platform overview. But first, let's see the different options available to use LAGO. You can use their cloud version, but for now it's on demand, so you need to contact them. You can self-deploy it by following the documentation, or use a hosting platform like ours to install it in a few clicks while taking care of updates and backups for you. Go to ls.io, hit login, click on deploy my first service, then search for LAGO, hit select, choose your cloud provider, I will choose Scaleway, then you can choose between different regions, I will keep friends, choose your service plan and hit next. Then you can adjust your level of support based on your needs, but you can keep the free one. You can rename your instance, I will keep it as the default one, and hit create service. I just received the email telling me that my instance is ready. I click here to get the password, then I copy the password into my clipboard and I access my instance by following the admin UI link. My email to login is my LSTO email address and the password is in my clipboard. I can hit login. When we arrive for the first time, we don't have a special onboarding process, but we can either follow the documentation or go into each section independently and you have explanation of how it works and the experience is very user friendly. Let's start by billable metrics. Let's add our first one. For this platform overview and to demonstrate the features of LAGO, we will act as if we are a platform hosting website. So for example, we want to charge our users for a monthly subscription. But in addition to that, we want to have a custom pricing for the bandwidth consumption or for the excess of storage on the websites. LAGO is the perfect solution to help us do that. The first metric we will create is named bandwidth. So the consumption of bandwidth our users will have on their website. The code, we can define one. A description to explain what it is. So website, bandwidth, consumption. How should we measure it? We have the choice between metered and recurring. Metered means that it will be reset to zero at the beginning of each period, because you can decide if it's weekly, monthly, or yearly or recurring, it's when the value is not reset to zero and is persistent over all billable periods. So for the bandwidth, we want it to be monthly. So we will choose method, aggregation type, and we will want to use the sum of all the gigabytes that have been used from our users. On the right, we have a preview on how we can call the API to automatically bill our users, but for now we can skip that right part. Add billable metric, so now we can charge our users based on bandwidth. Let's add another one, which is the storage code. We will use it storage too. For the description, it's website storage capacity. How should we measure it? This time we will take recurring because the storage won't reset to zero when a period is over. So it's lifetime of the storage. The aggregation type is also the sum. And for this one too, we will use gigabytes. Then we have that option here, define groups in this billable metric. Let's say for the storage, we have different type of file that we can host on our platform. Images, there are videos and all the other files. You can define specific pricing based on that, because maybe a video you will need to process it and do more thing than just an image and just a text file. This is something possible. Let's check the documentation. We have dimensions grouping explained. So grouping with a single key. We have an example on how it works. So let's copy the JSON example, paste it here and change it with our value. So what we want it to be is the type of file and the different values will be videos, images and others. 
Now we will be able to adjust pricing based on each. Add billable metric. You can add other billable metrics based on your needs, but for now let's stick to those two. And let's create plans. Let's jump into add a plan. Our first plan, we will name it starter. Plan code starter2. A description, the ideal plan for hosting a website. You can choose how often you build your user weekly, monthly, quarterly, or yearly. So maybe what you would want to do is to do starter underscore monthly and create the monthly. And if you want to bill separately yearly with a different price, you would create another one. Then you can choose the currency your plan is. So you can have different prices based on the user currency. You can add a tax rate, but let's keep it simple. And then we have the recurring charges. So we can say that our starting plan is free, but we don't want this. We want to say our users, even if they do no conception, just because they subscribe and hold their website, it will cost them 10 uh, USD per month. Then you have the choice if your user will pay in advance, which means when they subscribe, they will have directly to pay for the service or arrears which is paid after the billing period, so all the other conceptions are included. You can also add a trial period. You define the number of days when it's free. Let's not do it. And we have the most interesting part, usage-based charges. So let's add a charge. Add a meter charge. We can choose the bandwidth that we defined earlier. We defined the model of pricing, so you can really choose between different ways of charging based on what kind of data it is. For this case, the most adapted one is volume pricing. What we can do is from zero to let's say 10 gigabytes per unit, it will be zero, it's free. Then starting from 11, so when you have one more gigabyte, it will cost $1 per gigabyte. Of course, you can add as many tiers as you need. So maybe you will say you have a different pricing from 11 to 20 and from 21 to more. But let's keep it simple for now. So only starting from the 11 gigabyte, the pricing is one. Below that, it is free. For this specific metric, we can define if we pay in advance or if we charge after. So let's choose pay in arrears which means our user are invoiced at the end of the billing period. Okay, now let's add a second charge. This one, it is a recurring charge and it is the storage. And because we added that grouping feature, we have the default price, but we also have a price for images, others and videos. So the default price, we will say it is $5. But then for images, well, um, we are in standard pricing. No, we want it to be in volume pricing too. So default price, will be always zero. It is free. But when we start billing other kind of files, for example, for images, we want it to be $1 per, per gigabyte. So for the first 10, and then it will be two. Then for others, we can say it's always free. And for videos, it's more expensive because it consumes more resources. So let's say it's five per gigabyte and then it's less, two. Okay, now we can say pay in arrears two. We can define some options and let's add our plan. So we have our first plan ready, the starter one. Currently it has no customers attached to and it contains two separate charge in addition to the basic recurring fee. Now we have this plan ready inside the Lago dashboard. Let's see how we can use it using our different projects. Let's jump to the developer section. Here we can find our API key organization ID that we can use inside the SDK. To find the SDK, let's jump to the documentation, then go to API references. You can choose your backend language. Let's switch to JavaScript and we follow the procedure. So the name of the package is Lago JavaScript client. Let's open Visual Studio Code in an empty folder. Let's run npm init, okay then run npm install and the library. Once it's done, we can open our package.json and choose the type to be a module so we can do our imports inside our code. It should be good. Let's create our index 
.js file, we'll be using Node.js, and let's see how to use it. We need to import the client and init the client with our API key. Let's copy it, paste it into our index.js, go back to Largo and copy the API key. Then in our client, we paste it here. I recommend you not to type it directly, but use environment variables instead. So what we want to do is to create a customer and attach a subscription to our user, then to add some metric charges. Let's follow the documentation for this. Let's go to customers, create a customer. On the right, we have the different code we can copy paste as we are in JavaScript. So let's copy the example here. Let's create a method named create customer. It will be an async function, so we can do await inside. So await create customer. Let's get it. Customer is equal to, and we'll log our customer. Okay, so we have an error here because it's using TypeScript, but we are not, so we can get rid of it. And we don't need the import here because it's only for the types. There are a lot of information. We don't need all of them. Just let's stop at the name. Okay. So it's a bit simpler. And let's wrap our call to see if we have any error. Catch error. And we will console the error if we have one. Now it's ready. We can call our create customer function. Let's go to the terminal and run node index.js. And we have an error unauthorized. And here we have an error because we are using the self-halted version. So when we init our SDK here, we need to pass the URL of our own instance. So when we init our client, comma, we have an object with the options and we have base URL and we need to pass the URL of our instance. To find the URL, we can go, for example, to beable metrics, edit one, and on the right, we have the URL formatted here on the example, so we can copy it and paste it into our code. Let's try it again. And we have an error because it says external ID is mandatory. This is an error with their package because external ID, on the example, it was written like this. But what it is expecting is external underscore ID. Let's run it again. And now we have our user created. Let's jump to customers. We have Gavin Belson here. It has been created with the info we had in our code. We can use the SDK to assign a plan, but let's do it manually with assign a plan here. We want to select starter, but we'll have an issue because we are not in the same currency than our plan. So first we need to edit our user, billing information and switch the user to USD, or we should create the plan for the right one. Okay, and edit customer information. Now it's in USD, we should be able to assign the plan, starter. We can define a subscription external ID, but it will be set automatically. We can define a subscription name, but because we just want to assign the starter plan, we don't need to set specific information. We can define a start and end date, but by default it's starting today and it never ends, so it's recurring every month. And add plan. Now our user have a plan. We can go here and copy external ID. This is what we can use. Add some conception to our user. Let's go back to the documentation. So you can see we can create beable metrics programmatically, but here is not the usage, it's the definition of a beable metric. We could do the same for the plans for the subscription. And what we will want to do is to go into events and send usage event. It is the conception of one of our billable metric. Let's go into JavaScript. We can copy the code here. Let's create a new function, const send user usage, also an async function. And we paste the code we found. So we have create event event, the transaction ID, so it's a unique transaction ID that we need to generate either automatically or randomly. We'll be using a random number, but you should add maybe the timestamp. Then the external customer ID that we can find here. We get it and paste it in that string. Then the subscription ID, we can get it here and copy external ID. This is the one from the subscription. We paste it here. 
and the billable metric code. This is the one that we defined when we created our billable metrics. Let's start with bandwidth. Then we need to add the timestamp in seconds. So we do new date that get time to get the timestamp and we divide by 1000 to get the seconds from the milliseconds. And the properties, so it's the number of gigabytes and we have to set the value. Let's say for example, 20. Now we can, instead of create our customer, it already exists, we'll call send user usage. Of course, it's a demo. You should have to fetch your customer, call send user usage, and maybe it will take the number of gigabytes and the user ID. But here it's an example. Let's try to call it not index.js, but we have an error. And here the error is almost the same we had before. So it's because the example state transaction ID this way, but it should be this way. Same for external customer ID and external subscription ID. Let's try it again, not index.js. No error, it should work. We can go into developers, events, and we see all the events that happen. So we had that bandwidth event without an error. So now we can go to our customer, then go to usage, starter, and we have the total current usage. So storage is at zero because we didn't use it. We can show the breakdown per type, and we have the bandwidth. So for 20 units, we have already consumed $20. So at the end of this billing period, the user will be charged $20 plus the subscription price. So I think we defined it to $10. So you see how simple it is with Lago to add some billable metrics to your project, but you can even do more. You can create some add-ons. For example, you want a customer to charge it a one-time fee. So let's create an add-on. We'll name it setup fee, code setup fee. The amount will be 100 USD and let's add this add-on. Now we have it, we can go back to our customer, we can create an action and one off invoice. Now inside that invoice, which is automatically set up with the information of the user and our information, but we didn't configure it yet. Add an add-on. We have the list of the one we created. For now we have only setup fee. The total price and the taxes are calculated automatically based on your settings and create invoice. Now on our user, if we go into invoice, it has that pending invoice. I won't cover it deeply, but you can also add coupons to do some promo code to your user. And you can define the settings of your instance. So for the moment, it is called main by default, but we should edit our organization name and all the information to appear on the invoices. You can also select a different time zone. You can define your tax rates based on where you are and to who you charge. You can also use emails automatically, but you need a premium account. So you need to contact the sales to have access to it. And in integration, you can define the different payment providers you want your user to be able to use to pay their invoice and their subscription. And you can invite other people from your team to join you on Lago and manage your subscriptions and invoices. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button as it really helps the channel grow and be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our upcoming videos. In the meantime, you can continue discovering great free tools by watching this video here.